For the past 24 years, people have asked me how to develop an above average income. The answer is simple. Become an above average person. Start by perfecting an above average handshake. Many people aspire to be successful, but neglect something as basic as their handshake. Develop an above average smile. Show above average excitement and take a genuine interest in others. Cultivate an intense desire to win. These changes can transform everything. One of the most frustrating experiences in life is seeking an above average job with above average pay without becoming an above average person. It leads to frustration. Mr. Schaff gave me invaluable advice when I first met him. He said, Jim, if you want to be wealthy and happy for the rest of your life, learn this lesson well. Work harder on yourself than you do on your job. This was one of the many important lessons he taught me. Mr. Schaff was kind but direct, often asking thought-provoking questions. During a conversation where I was explaining my struggles, he interrupted and said, Mr. John, I have the answer for you if you will listen carefully. And listen carefully I did, not just that day, but for the next five years. Mr. Schoff once told me, Jim, if somebody's wealthy and happy, there's a reason. For things to change for you, you've got to change. It wasn't the answer I was looking for, but it was the truth. I share this with you. For things to change for you, you must change. Before meeting Mr. Schoff, I used to hope that things would change on their own. I realized that if things didn't change, I was in serious trouble. And then it hit me. It isn't the world that needs to change, it's me. I remember giving a seminar for Standard Oil executives in Honolulu. During a conference, someone asked me what I thought the 80s would be like. I replied, based on my experience, the 80s will be about like it's always been. They listened carefully, expecting profound insights. I said this to make a point. The fundamental nature of life doesn't change. The tide comes in and it goes out. It gets light and then it gets dark. This has been the pattern for thousands of years and it's not going to change. We shouldn't be surprised by these constants. If someone is shocked when the sun sets, they simply haven't been paying attention. Life follows predictable cycles. After fall comes winter, every year, without fail. While the severity of each winter varies, the sequence does not. Sometimes you can anticipate what's coming, and sometimes you can't. Life's mix of opportunity and difficulty has been consistent throughout history. So, if the external world isn't going to change, how can your life change? The answer is simple, when you change. This is the message I deliver to everyone, from high school students to business executives. The only way life gets better for you is when you get better. Let me give you the four major lessons in life. It's important to focus on the major things because many people don't succeed because they major in minor things. At the end of each week or month, evaluate how you're spending your time to ensure you're not wasting major time on minor tasks. Before diving into the four major lessons, let me share two key phrases. The first is, life and business are like the changing seasons. Frank Sinatra even sings about life being like the seasons. This analogy is one of the best ways to describe life. Now here's the second phrase, which is very important. You cannot change the seasons, but you can change yourself. You can't change the seasons, but you can change yourself. That's how life gets better for you. Not by chance, but by change. Now, here are the four major lessons in life to learn. I finished my first book and these lessons are in it. Firstly, learn how to handle the winters. Winters come right after falls with regularity. Some winters are long, some short, some hard, some easy, but they always come. You must learn to handle the nights that follow days, the difficulty that follows opportunity, and the recessions that follow progressions. This pattern has been consistent for the last 6,000 years. You must learn how to handle these winters, whether they are economic, social, or personal. Winters can bring broken hearts and long, difficult nights. 
As Barbara Streisand sings, it used to be so natural to talk about forever, but used to be's don't count anymore. Disappointments and hardships are a part of life, but the key is how you handle them. You can't eliminate January by tearing it off the calendar, but you can become stronger, wiser, and better. Winters won't change, but you can. Secondly, learn how to take advantage of the spring. Spring represents opportunity and follows winter. It's perfectly placed after winter, occurring every year with regularity. Days follow nights and opportunity follows difficulty. But to benefit, you must take advantage of the spring. Just because spring arrives doesn't mean you will have a good harvest come fall. You have to act. You must get good at either planting in the spring or begging in the fall. There are only a few springs in a lifetime. So read every book and seize every opportunity while you can. Life is brief and springs soon run out. As the Beatles remind us, life is very short. Whatever you plan to do, start now. Don't let the springs pass by. Next thing is, learn how to protect your crops. All summer, you must take care of what you start. As soon as you plant your garden in the spring, the bugs and weeds come out. They will take your crops unless you protect them. Every garden will be invaded. Not to think so is naive. All good must be defended. Political values, social values, community values, family values, marriage values, friendship values, and business values. Every garden must be tended all summer. Next, learn how to reap in the fall without complaint. When it's time to harvest, learn to do so without complaint. Take full responsibility for what happens to you. It's a sign of maturity. Accepting full responsibility marks the transition from childhood to adulthood. Learn to reap without apology if you do well and without complaint if you don't. I used to have a long list of reasons why I wasn't doing well. The government, taxes, prices, weather, traffic, my car, the company, the training program, my negative relatives, my cynical neighbors, the economy, and the community. One day, Mr. Schof, very bluntly, asked me why I hadn't done well up until then. I went through my entire list and he patiently listened. When I finished, he pointed out the big problem with my list. I wasn't on it. That realization was a turning point. I tore up my list and wrote a new one with one word on it, me. As the spiritual song goes, it's not my mother, nor my father, nor my brother, nor my sister, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. I used to blame everything outside myself. Here's the philosophy that turned my life around. It's not what happens that determines the quality or quantity of your life. It's what you do about what happens. The same events happen to everyone, but it's how you respond that makes the difference. It's not what happens, it's what you do. I used to belong to the 97% who couldn't be bothered, even if it was easy. Here's my advice to you today. Walk away from the 97%. Don't talk like they talk. Don't act like they act. Don't go where they go. Don't specialize in what they specialize in. Throw away the blameless they cling to. Start you a new life. You say, well, is it as simple as getting a library card and join the 3%? That's how easy this stuff is. This is so easy. It's so simple. It's not complex. You don't need a 2000 year old guru. You don't need multi-track affirmations. I'm telling you don't affirmation without discipline is the beginning of delusion. Key, don't let somebody sweep you into some contrary way to nature itself. It says, unless you labor the miracle of the seed and the soil and the seasons and God and all the other stuff that's available, sunshine and rain, that's not available to you by affirmation. It is only available to you by labor. So labor well, learn well, discipline yourself well, and you can have all the treasures you want. This stuff's easy and simple. It's not ocean waves and seagulls. 
Take charge of your own conversation. Take charge of your own family. Take charge of your own possibilities and learn these skills. Develop this kind of strategy. And I'm telling you, life will open up for you. Join the 3%, join the 10%, join the 5%. Walk away from the 95%, find out what poor people read and don't read it. I'm telling you, don't talk like they talk. Lend a helping hand, but don't fall into the their poor philosophical scenario. Don't blame what they blame. Don't use the excuses they use. It's called the language of the poor. Switch gears, switch language, switch ideas, switch strategy. Start with the simplest of disciplines and don't be mean any of these disciplines. The smallest of disciplines starts the process of life change. And if you'll invest in this thing called discipline, you can have whatever you wish. It's called the beginning of a miracle. We all must suffer one of two pains, regardless of your choice of lifestyle and what you want to do. We must all suffer one of two pains, the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. And what we suggest to everybody is to consider the disciplines because disciplines weigh odds. Regrets weigh tons. You don't want to substitute a discipline for a regret. In our opinion, that would be a poor choice. Now you can do it, but some things are poor trade-offs. The old prophet said, what if you gained the whole world, but it cost you your soul? Would that be worth it? And with a bit of intelligence, we say no. That doesn't seem worth it. Even if you got the whole world, if you traded your soul, that experience would be so bitter and so awful and so devastating, it wouldn't be worth it. What if you got some gain by greed instead of legitimate ambition? I'm telling you, disciplines work miracles. Disciplines work miracles. And here's the first piece that works miracles. One, do what you can do. Not let neglect grab you by the throat. Don't let neglect stall you on your path toward prosperity and health. Being able to become powerful, influential, rich beyond wildest imagination. Don't neglect what you can do. If you can, read, read if you can. Change, change if you can. Grow, grow if you can. Take one step, take one step. Do not neglect to do whatever you can do at the moment. Of course you can't run a multi-billion dollar business today. Mark couldn't either 10 years ago. Mark couldn't either five years ago. But I'm telling you today he can do it because step by step, year by year, he took on what he could do. He didn't neglect it. He did the meetings he could do. He made the calls he could make. He read the books he could read. He took the classes he could take and step by step, he got himself ready. I'm telling you, do not neglect to do whatever you can do because it'll work miracles of personal development first, productivity second. Now do what you can. Two, do the best you can. If it's a foggy night and you can only see 100 feet, how can you see another 100 feet? Answer, walk the first 100 feet, walk as far as you can see, and then you can see some more, and walk as far as you can see, and then you can see some more. So what you've picked up here, just do it as far as you can see it, and I promise you, if you'll execute as far as you can see it, you'll be able to see more. Do that, then you can see more. And finally, get in tune of doing the best you can. And you'll have the activity that'll develop the disciplines that will set this sail so that you can say, it doesn't matter how the wind blows, I'm prepared for some people. They see discipline as sort of an ugly word, you know? Don't talk to me about discipline. But what you must understand is discipline is a most incredible creative force. Discipline builds a career. Discipline develops good health. Discipline forms the most incredible marriage. Discipline puts together a friendship that that won't quit forever. Discipline develops skills that can be magnified, you know, and touch the world. Disciplines opens up music. You know, you can't have incredible music without discipline. In fact, we call them the disciplines. We call architecture and music and we call playing an instrument, we call sculpturing, we call painting, we call writing, composing. We call those the disciplines. And the disciplines gives us the indication that, yes, it doesn't come except by discipline. But it also means that the discipline 
is the open door to the, to the creative process, to turn nothing into something and to turn imagination into reality. So here's what you must learn to do. Appreciate the disciplines and welcome the disciplines. Here's a good question to ask. What other discipline could I begin that would open up a whole new expression in my life of turning imagination into reality? Without discipline, there is no enterprise. Without discipline, there is no magnificent structure. Without discipline, there is no music. Without discipline, there is no health. Without discipline, you know there is no advantage. There is no future. So discipline is all when it comes to imagination, having something real, believing in it, and turning it into reality. The key to development is to be all that you can possibly be. I don't know what your talents are. I don't know what your skills are. But here's what I probably am, right on, that you're behind on an accelerated effort toward your full development. I would suggest that now for some of you, I know that's probably really not true. But even as I look at my own life, because you know, I'm, you know, I'm tempted to procrastinate just like everybody else. Here's the time to act. When the idea is hot and the emotion is strong, that's the time to act. You say, Mr. Run, I'd like to have a library like yours. See if you feel strong about that. What you've got to do is get the first book and then get the second book before the feeling passes and before the idea gets dim. Action, prompto action. Immediate action as soon as possible. Because if you don't, here's what happens. We call it the law of diminishing intent. We intend to when the idea strikes us. We intend to when the emotion is high. But now, if you don't translate that into action fairly soon, now the intent starts to diminish, 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 and a month from now it's cold. A year from now can't be found. So act, set up a discipline. When the emotions are high and the idea is strong and clear and powerful, that's the time to set up the discipline. Somebody talks about good health and you're stirred. Says, right, I need to get a book on nutrition. Get the book before the idea passes and before the emotion gets cold. Go for the book. Start the library. Start the process. Fall on the floor. Do some push-ups action. Got to take action. Otherwise, the wisdom is wasted. Otherwise, the emotion soon passes unless you put it into a disciplined activity. Capture it. Disciplines is called how to capture the emotion and how to capture the wisdom and translate it into equity discipline. Now here's what's important about disciplines. All disciplines affect each other. In fact, here's a good philosophical phrase. Everything affects everything else. Nothing stands alone. Don't be naive in saying, well, this doesn't matter. I'm telling you, everything matters. There are some things that matter more than others, but there isn't anything that doesn't matter. Okay, we all pity the man who says, well, this is the only place I let down. Not true key to take home. Every letdown affects the rest of your performance. Every letdown affects the rest. This is part of the educational process on personal development. If you don't take the walk around the block, you probably won't do the apple a day. If you don't do the apple a day, you probably won't consist you know, start building your library. If you don't build your library, you probably won't keep a journal and you won't take pictures and you won't do this. You won't do wise things with your money, won't do wise things with your time, won't do wise things with your possibilities and relationships. And the first thing you know, six years of that accumulated and we say you have messed up. So the whole key to reversing that process now is to start picking up these disciplines. Now here's the positive side. Every new discipline affects the rest of your disciplines. Every new one affects the rest. That's why action is so important. The least action, the smallest action, take it. Because when you start accomplishing and the value starts to return from that one action, it'll inspire you to do the next one and the next one and the next one. You start walking around the block. It'll inspire you to get an apple 
get an apple. It'll inspire you to get a book. Get a book. It'll inspire you to get a journal. Get a journal. It'll inspire you to grow, develop some skills. All disciplines affect each other. Every lack affects the rest. Every new affects the rest. The key is to diminish the lack and set up the new. And you've started a whole new life process.